Okay, so uh, we are going to have Vocab 27 tutorial now. Uh, the C-U-R word, C-U-R means run. So we have concur. I would circle agree. Um, you know, like uh, if, if you give your opinion, I might say, well, I concur with, with you. I agree with you. Uh, or I concur with your opinion. That'd be so nice. Okay, the second definition says happen together, coincide. So all that's saying is people are happy when good things concur, like when a birthday and nice weather happen at the same time. That's a nice thing, when they concur. Then we have concurrent. It says running together, occurring at the same time. So that's easy. That's like two movies showing at the same theater the same weekend. Um, then we have a uh, current, like look at the adjective current. No, I will not test, I don't think I will test the first definition. So let's focus on the second one. Now in progress, prevailing. So I'm thinking about current events, events that are right now in progress and prevailing on the news cycle. Curriculum, you know, this is just the course of study in a school or college. Cursive, running or flowing, set of handwriting in which the letters are joined. Okay, that's pretty easy. Cursory, I'm thinking this is an unfamiliar word to you, which you definitely need to know. It says running over hastily. What that really means is not paying attention to details, just uh, looking at something in a hurry, uh, superficially done. Boy, that reminds me of annotations. You know, just slop, slapping some slop on that page uh, without really paying attention to details or without really putting some thought and effort into it. So you might uh, study, you might say, oh, I studied, I studied for that vocab, but maybe you did it in a cursory manner. Just kind of looking over it, but not seriously bona fide studying. Then we come to discursive. Discursive, oh boy, it has quite a definition here. Digressive, I don't think I'm going to test you on digressive so you can scratch that out. It says wandering from one topic to another. Okay, so it's really just saying if something, if uh, I'm giving a discursive talk, which I try not to do, I know sometimes I get off on a tangent but I try to stick to the main course, but a discursive conversation or a discursive, um, if, if I'm giving a discursive lecture, that would be where I'm tending to cover a wide range of subjects. Now, I personally think a discursive conversation, like if I were visiting with you when you are my former student, oh my goodness, I love to visit with my former students. I mean to really sit down and talk and have a discursive conversation where we might cover any number of topics, everything from current events to, I, I frequently ask my former students when they come in to visit, what do you think about this? And it could be something we've never discussed before, but I'd like to know other people's opinions about me. Okay, enough of that. Excursion. Uh, this is just an expedition. Like if you are on an excursion, its primary purpose is pleasure. Uh, sometimes if you go on a cruise, uh, you'll pay extra for, for the excursions that you want to participate in. If you're going snorkeling or scuba diving, whatever. Um, then we have incur. It says to bring upon oneself or to uh, bring something undesirable upon yourself. So incur, that's really easy. If you don't pay your bills on time, you will incur a lot of late charges and significant debt. Or um, if, you dis if you say something disrespectful to your mom, you're probably going to incur her wrath or her anger. And then incursion, that's a little less familiar. Incursion is a rushing into like an army or a hostile invasion. So think of it about it like we can have an incursion of 
some kind of invasive species into a new region. Or we can have an incursion where it's floodwaters into your home, like after Hurricane Harvey. That would be a, a horrible incursion. And then we come to precursor, which is forerunner, predecessor. So uh, usually a precursor is like a catalyst that uh, leads to what follows. For example, procrastination is often a precursor for disappointing grades, for sure. Then we come to recur, it's a verb that means happen again, happen over. So I would say like if you have the same crazy dream night after night, you're having a recurring dream. This dream recurs and it's kind of unsettling. Uh, Gress means step or walk or go. I like to think of it as st uh, step. We have aggressive, which you know, you know that word. Egress. Egress is the opposite of ingress. Here they give the opposite of access, but basically egress is an exit. If you remember when we read A Tale of Two Cities, it said that um, egress was much, much harder out of Paris. Egress out of Paris was much harder than ingress. In other words, it was a lot harder to exit Paris than to, to enter it. So maybe you could learn egress, E-G, and exit, E-X. Okay, then we come to gradation. Now, I won't, I don't want, just scratch out the second definition. Gradation is a change by steps or stages. So it's anything with a bunch of levels or stages. Um, like at Huntsville High School, the process of moving from ninth to 12th grade has a lot of gradations. Um, yeah. Okay. Grade, I think you know that. Gradient, I would really like you just to learn the second definition. It's slope. I guess it's kind of implying that it's like the slope of a road, like the first definition. Um, or the slope of temperature, voltage, whatever. Um, if you are driving up or down a mountain, you have to be really careful with the gradient. And sometimes, I guess it's someplace in Colorado, maybe when I was going up Pikes Peak, they would have gradient signs and they would actually give the percentage of the slope and suggest which gear you're, you should be driving in. Okay, gradual, you know that. Graduate, you know that. But graduated, the adjective is very, very different. It says arranged in regular steps, stages, or degrees. But I just think of it like divided into degrees or arranged by degrees. And for example, there are two things I thought of. One is a strand of pearls. Um, a lot of times you'll, you'll, like a pearl necklace, it will have graduated pearls. They start off really small and they get slightly bigger, slightly bigger, slightly bigger, slightly bigger. They're graduated, they're by degrees. Another one would be like a liquid measuring cup. You know, it has the uh, graduated lines on the inside of the cup. It starts off with a fourth cup, then a third cup, then a half, you know, all that. Okay. So then we go to progressive. Now, this is an adjective, and I like my definition uh, better than theirs, and I like my synonyms and antonyms better than theirs. So I'm going to give you the definition in favor of new ideas, modern methods, and change. Um, in favor of new ideas, modern methods, and change. And uh, I would say that uh, right now in political circles, progressive has become uh, something primarily associated with the far left, perhaps, of the Democratic Party. Um, the, 
Okay, so here's a synonym for progressives. That would be liberal. If you say, uh, what's your bent in politics? You might say, oh, I'm a progressive, which means you're a liberal. You're in favor of all kinds of uh, new and uh, very new and modern ways of thinking, et cetera. The opposite of that is uh, a conservative. So uh, the opposite, the, I would say the progressive party might be maybe this new rise in socialism. Uh, and then the conservatives would be the very old school Republican. Uh, the conservative business wise, a lot of people um, are members, a lot of businessmen are members of the Republican Party just because of the viewpoints about taxations, corporations, etc. All right, uh, regressive, you may scratch off your list as well as retrograde, you may scratch that. Retrogression, you know, that's just things getting better. I mean, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Things getting worse rather than better. It's the opposite of progress. Oh, sounds awful, retrogression. Uh, then transgress means to basically break a law in religious circles. It means to sin, you know, the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who transgress against us. Um, then we go to ped, which this is important that you know this root because ped means foot. Uh, you can scratch off biped, centipede, we, we, we don't need that. Uh, expedite, surely you know expedite is to accelerate or speed up. Oftentimes, I will think, Ooh, do I want expedited delivery and so that it will get here tomorrow instead of two days from now? Yikes. Um, I think we could scratch off the first definition, facilitate. I, I don't know what that's talking about in relation to expedite. Impede. Impede means to hinder or to obstruct or to block. Uh, sometimes if I'm really excited about a new idea and I take it to the principal or I take it to my PLC group or whatever, I don't want anybody to impede the progress or the implementation of my new idea. I don't want anybody to slow it down. I want to go full speed ahead. Um, impediment, that's a hindrance. That's just the noun version of the verb. So it's a hindrance or an obstacle or a defect, you know, if we talk about having a speech impediment, um, that would be a speech defect. Okay, um, millipede, you may scratch off. Pedal, hello. I think you know pedal. I even think you know pedestal. If we put someone, you know, that old expression, put someone on a pedestal, that means we respect them so greatly, so highly that we almost think they cannot do anything wrong, but of course, everyone's human. Pedestrian, ooh, there's two definitions. I know that you know the noun pedestrian, like someone crossing the street. Uh, watch out for pedestrians, that's, that's good. But there's the adjective pedestrian, which means eh, commonplace, dull, uh, like average, like if you pay, if you pay 20, I don't even know, that's probably too, too little. Okay, if you pay $20 for a, a meal, like just your entree, if you pay $20 for your entree at a restaurant, you don't want it to be a pedestrian um, plate, a pedestrian meal. You don't want it to be just average, no. You want it to be much better than that. Um, they give the example of like a pedestrian performance. Let's suppose, let's suppose you pay $50 to see some play, and then it turns out to be boring and just not even interesting at all. You fall asleep. Um, that would be a pedestrian performance. Then velocipede, I know this is such an old timey word, but I want you to learn it just because I have a cute question about a tricycle on the test, so you need to learn that. All right, then we come to, oh, we're almost done. 
contact, you know what contact is. Okay, contiguous. Uh, this is a this is a hard word to define. To define. It it technically means having a common boundary or edge. It it's it, it's just really super hard to define this word. Let me tell you how this word is used almost 100% of the time. And that would be the when the weatherman is talking and he's announcing a front that is coming into the contiguous 48, 48 states. They share this, you know, boundary of North America, USA, but the 48 contiguous states does not, those states do not include Hawaii or Alaska. Um, but almost always you hear it used as contiguous. Um, here's another one. Maybe you're, if you, if you have a garage that's attached to your house, it's adjoining your house, it's contiguous. If you have a, a separate garage that's like over there where you park over there and then you walk across the grass to your house, I don't know, I'm reaching it for straws here, whatever. Contingent, let's go to contingent. This means depending on something else. I would say a better definition might be determined by conditions or circumstances that follow determined by conditions or circumstances that follow. For example, I might tell my kids, where we go for vacation this year is contingent on whether I get a raise. Um, we might be camping in the backyard. Um, let's see, intact. Oh my goodness. If a, if a tornado comes through my neighborhood, I'm hoping my house is intact. I'm hoping my house is untouched or uninjured, kept or left whole. Um, if a box arrives from Amazon and it's all dented, I'm hoping that the contents are intact as opposed to defective. I'm hoping it's just the box that's ruined and not the, in the contents. All right, intangible. Intangible is that it, oh, there's two definitions. One is you can't touch it. Like um, you might think a ghost is in the room with you, but the ghost would be intangible. You can't touch it. Or uh, maybe you're trying to express yourself, what you're feeling, emotions. Oh. And maybe it's just really hard for you to define it to articulate it and so maybe you're just really struggling with this intangible feeling that you're feeling okay then we come to a word that's super important tact tact the noun um uh, wow sensitive mental perception of what is appropriate on a given occasion wow that's a crazy definition i think what it's trying to say is this sense of social intelligence. Social intelligence is if you walk into a room and you see two people are having a, an unpleasant conversation, you don't go up to them and start, hey, Bob, how you doing? You know, you have some tact. You're going to try to maybe get them some privacy to work things out, to talk things out. Um, so, or it could be like, you're going to talk. Oh, teachers sometimes have to use great tact when talking with parents. They don't want to just come out and say, your kid is very lazy. So they will say something more tactful, like it seems that your, your son uh, really struggles with um, energy having summoning energy to do his tasks that sounds a lot more tactful than uh your son is lazy um i think it's good to be tactful uh it, i try really hard sometimes i'm 
not as tactful as maybe I could be, but I really do want to always be tactful. If you were tactful, you wouldn't tell your fruit, fruit you wouldn't tell your friend that the food at her party was awful. Instead, you would focus on what was good about her party. You would talk about the great music, etc. So it's important to be tactful. People who are tactful try to be polite and sensitive to uh, what's going on before they just open their mouth and start talking. Uh, on the other hand, it's not on here, but I did guarantee you I'm going to put it on the test. There's a word, oh yes, it is on here, that antonym, tactless. Let's suppose that you find out that you got a scholarship to, to U, UT. You want to go to UT. and You got a scholarship, all expenses paid, and you were so excited. So you would not want to be as tactless um, as saying uh, to the friend who also applied for the same scholarship, oh man, this is amazing, I got the scholarship. Oh, you didn't? Oh, I'm so sorry. That would be tactless. Okay. Tactile is just uh, pertaining to the sense of touch. So there's a huge tactile difference between smooth glass and rough sandpaper. Okay, tangent. Uh, we're talking about a noun tangent. Don't worry about the adjective tangent, but let's just take the noun. I am definitely not going to test you on the math definition of tangent, and that's the only thing given. So let's say a, a tangent is an entirely different topic or direction. An entirely different topic or direction. So maybe we've been talking about, um, I don't know, we've been talking about the good earth and someone raises a tangent like uh, the basketball playoffs or something. What's that? Okay, uh, tangential, tangential just means digressive like we were talking about a while ago, I think. Just slightly, okay, don't worry about tangential. Let's look tangent. I can't say it, so let's not test it. Let's just cr cross it off right now. Then we're down to the last section, and we have apprehend, which is a verb that has two very different meanings. One could be, number one, seize or take into custody, like we're talking criminals, apprehend criminals, apprehend the suspect. Uh, then the second one is to understand a concept. Now I apprehend what you have been talking about. Finally, I apprehend. Okay, um, apprehensive, you know this word. Uh, let's not test the first definition. Let's get rid of that one. But just uh, worry about number two, anxious, fearful of what may come. Uh, comprehensible, it's capable of being grasped mentally. It's understandable. Like reading, uh, I feel like the good earth is totally comprehensible. Whereas picking up Attila Two Cities for almost all sophomore readers, that would be incomprehensible without the aid of cliff notes or something or a teacher. Uh, it would be pretty incomprehensible. Then we have comprehensive, which means I would just scratch everything out except extensive. So if you get comprehensive treatment at a spa, you're going to get a massage, a manicure, and a facial. Boy, that's comprehensive treatment. Uh, prehensile, or, I'm sorry, prehensile. It just means capable of grabbing or seizing, uh, adapted for seizing like a prehensile claw. Um, and that will be tested, so you need to know it. Then we have reprehend, this is a verb. And I would, I think you know the word censure and rebuke, but reprehend is to express strong disapproval of. Um, and then reprehensible is deserving of this strong rebuke, deserving of censure. What you did was reprehensible. Like if you trip a blind person and make that person fall, that is reprehensible. And I hope someone 
reprehend you for doing that. Okay, look at that. You are going to be well prepared. Please be diligent in study and be a vocab victor. There are many of you who just need one, two, or three more. And we have three left before our vocab victor dinner, which is I think going to be on Friday, May 17th.